Wouldn't it be great if we could actually make substantive reform on the border, particularly in parole, asylum, the credible fear definition? Because that's what drives these migrants to the border is our policy, not enforcing the current law on asylum, which is an executive branch decision that President Biden has made. I don't know. It's a vexing right. topic. It's in the Senate to see if they can put together something strong that then could be accepted by the House. Former President Trump just messaging with Maria Bartiromo over at Fox Business. He's got a message on this. It's really grabbed a resonance. Are we going to rewall the southern border? I mean, Arkansas is not that far from it. I get my map out. You know, <laughs> I know. I'm I killing didn't myself. Do that. No, we've had our national Are guard. Are we going to rebuild a wall there? But we've had our national guard troops down there. We've been building wall on a bipartisan basis. I always remind people going back to 1992 in certain high congested areas like Southern California. The wall that President Trump was extending was essentially down the Rio Grande Valley, about 130 miles, I think was the original mm -hmm. forecast, where there hasn't been a wall. Why? Because you've got a broad river delta there, a lot of farmland, so it's tougher. But that's what's been under construction and what President Biden stopped when he came into office. So I would say, yes, that area is still a, a very solid target for fencing barrier, wall, whatever you want to call it, because the CBP, the Customs and Border Patrol, recommends it. They recommend that area. Well, it's interesting. I mean, this has been a, a topic, this just immigration reform for a long time. And it's now seems to be like it, just take New York City. It, everybody, it's on the front burner for right. everybody now. So it just feels politically kind of a, a, a no brainer for both sides to come together. I, could, I couldn't agree more. more. You know, every state we say is a border state because yep. of uh, seven million encounters and over three million people admitted waiting an asylum hearing and they're floating around all over our country. You've got the mayor of New York City going to Mexico. You've got uh, Peter Lynch, my, uh, my good uh, uh, pal up a Vermont senator, very yep. liberal guy, good guy, good friend of mine, saying, you know, President Biden, do something. This is a national problem. The issue is, Paul, he could do it on his own by executive order. He undid the Trump policies by executive order, and he could bring them back, and that would cut down the flow. In fact, James Lankford, the senator from Oklahoma, working on this, if you enforced existing law on asylum and the credible fear standard, meaning you have to apply for asylum from a third country, he estimates 70% of that flow pressing against the southern border would be, uh, would be corrected. Let's go to the state of Arkansas here. Um, we had Ellen Zetner, the chief economist for Morgan Stanley on just before, and she said she took a trip down there last week, and she was, uh, I think, pleasantly surprised by the amount of activity, the amount of building, the amount of investment going on there. What's driving that? Give us the state of the state you of Arkansas. Well, our, our state is doing well. About 50% of our state is uh, agriculturally based, and it's uh, dependent on exports, too, to Mexico and Canada, just like much of America. But in the northwest corner of the state, uh, the University of Arkansas Systems is growing, and the Fortune 500 companies headquartered there, Tyson, Walmart, uh, J.B. Hunt, and others, and all the logistics that support public. those uh, institutions are growing. In central Arkansas, where I represent Little Rock, is also <clears throat> growing. It's a good environment, and I, I noted your conversation uh, previously. And look, it is a sign of the rise of the rest. Steve Case's uh, theory that the yeah, whole part of the country, FR, and I think yeah. that's I think that's what you're witnessing in Northwest Arkansas. We yeah. have good venture startups, good accelerators on both our campuses in Central Arkansas and right. Northwest. This is a, a book, folks. I featured two years ago. I'm going to say, but Steve Case of AOL doesn't have to do a thing, work another day in his life. Is hugely committed to talking about. He totally disagrees with the flyover uh, idiocy and is talking about the rise of the rest as Congressman French Hill talks about. French Hill with us, of course, from uh, Little Rock. Um, this came up and it comes up numerous times. We see it on TV. We hear it on the radio. We make jokes, except it's not funny. And I actually went back yesterday to see how much I missed Robert Byrd of the Virginias. The decorum in your house has gone to absolute hell. There's no other way to put it. You are hugely respected on both sides of the aisle. For our kids, for us, how in God's name do we get control back of decorum and questioning of citizens in the House of Representatives? 
Tom, it's so true. I've been in the House nine years, but I've, I've worked in Washington before. I was a staffer in the Senate under when President Reagan in his first term, and I worked for President Bush 41 for four years. It has really deteriorated. Social media has driven that performance uh, opportunities for individual members where's of Congress. Where's the decorum police? I mean, where's the senior officer saying, if you ever say that again, we're going to put the French Hill cork in your mouth? Yeah. You know, what's sad is you don't see any uh, repercussions. Even when you censure somebody or threaten to censure somebody or remove them from a committee, you still see people see that as empowering in this individual performance artistry that you see in Congress. We need, we've always had people who were show ponies in Congress and workhorses. Well, we have that on Bloomberg surveillance. <laughs> Lisa, why are you looking at no, no, me? She's not making a comment, absolutely yeah. not. But, uh, Kennedy always, I always loved his quote in, his, in the first inaugural about civility is not a sign of weakness, and you have to have the ability to have a civil debate on both sides of the aisle and within parties. And the problem in the last 12 months has been much of it has been in our own party, the Republican Party. How are House. you going to get decorum back from the show pony stage soundbite? Yeah. Uh, what I heard the other day, Paul, was absolutely reprehensible. Forget about the politics yeah. of it. Where's the French Hill police on decorum? Well, we do invite people to uh, politely shut up, uh, <laughs> but it doesn't work because of what I'm outlining. I think that we, I think we have to burn okay. through this, but I tell you, Tom, social media has driven yeah. a lot of this. 